What on earth did you do? Annie's voice reverberated through the party hall. All eyes turned towards her as she gazed down at her dress now stained with juice. The room fell into a momentary silence with everyone's attention fixated on Annie and Wyan. I'm really sorry but I didn't mean to do it on purpose. It was totally unintentional. Wyan could feel the weight of everyone's gaze upon them. She wanted to resolve the problem as soon as possible. She felt genuinely sorry for Annie's dress, expressing her remorse for mistakenly ruining it. Sorry, do you even have the means to afford it? Annie's voice echoed once again. Hearing her words, Wyan felt super embarrassed. The whispers and stares from everyone around only added to her discomfort. I tripped. Do you not know how to walk, you uneducated fool? Oh, I forgot this is your first time at a fancy party like this. Annie abruptly interrupted Wyan's words, not allowing her to finish her sentence. Her words were hurtful, mocking Wyan in front of everyone. Wyan's eyes swelled up with tears, overwhelmed by the intense embarrassment. If you don't even know how to attend a party, then just stay at enough. Wan took two steps back when she heard Jungkook's voice, standing behind her with a fiery anger in his eyes, fixated on Annie. Jungkook, I'm glad you are here. Take a look at what Wan did to my dress. Upon seeing Jungkook, without hesitation, Annie rushed towards him and grabbed his arm, ignoring his anger. What the hell did you think you were doing just now? Don't play innocent with me. Jungkook's eyes burned with anger as he spoke forcefully, freeing his arm from her grip. He stood beside Wyan, grabbing her hand firmly in his own, and his eyes filled with jealousy as she witnessed Wyan's hand in Jungkook's, as she couldn't help but feel embarrassed by his words in front of everyone. How could you blame me? It was her fault in the first place. If she is saying that she didn't do it intentionally, why are you making a fuss over something so stupid like a child? But don't you dare to bother her anymore. I've already had enough of your nonsense. There's a limit to my patience. His intimidating aura and the chilling tone in his voice were enough to make Annie quickly shut her mouth. Holding Wyan's hand, he made his way through the crowd, exiting the party hall. Annie's anger and embarrassment grew as she clenched her fists. Her dislike for Wyan intensified even more. She had intended to mock her and bring her down in front of everyone. But to her surprise, it was Annie who ended up feeling embarrassed. She never expected Jungkook to defend Wyan in such a way. Ignoring the gazes of those around her, Annie made her way out of the party hall lost in her thought. Determination burned within her as she contemplated her next move. She was determined to find a way to remove Wyan from Jungkook's life no matter what it took. As they drove home, the car was engulfed in silence. Jungkook remained silent, not uttering a word. Wyan, afraid of his anger, didn't dare to speak. Entering their shared bedroom, Jungkook walked over the bedside table and took off his wristwatch, placing it carefully. Just as he was about to settle in, he felt a gentle tug on his sleeve, causing him to turn around. Wyan stood there holding onto his sleeve. To him, she looked like a lost puppy. I didn't do it on purpose. For a while, silence enveloped the room. Wyan, feeling nervous, kept her gaze fixed on the ground, anxiously awaiting Jungkook's response. Not receiving any response, she mustered the courage to look up at him, meeting his gaze. She found no trace of anger in his eyes. Instead, his gaze was soft and gentle. Did I ask you for an explanation? Hearing his words, Wan quickly nodded her head in a no gesture. Seeing her reaction, Jungkook's lips curved into a small smile. Alright, let's just forget about it. I believe you're not the kind of person who would intentionally do something like that. He softly explained it to her. Thank you so much. For what? He furrowed his brow and asked. For believing in me and standing up for me in that moment. I'm really grateful. She said it with a sweet and innocent smile on her face, radiating pure sincerity. No need to thank me, I'll always be there for you, no matter what it, what happens in the future. Their relationship wasn't a romantic one, they were more like two people sharing a roof. He was a dangerous mafia whom everyone feared but he never treated her badly though, always making sure to fulfill her needs. They didn't interact much as Jungkook was always busy with his mafia work. 
Annie and Hans were siblings and partners of Jungkook in the mafia world. Annie had an intense obsession with Jungkook, which led to her deep hatred for Wayan. She always did things which managed to make Jungkook angry. He never introduced Wayan to anyone before. But this time he took her to a mafia party just because he wanted to avoid taking Annie as his partner and instead chose Wayan. Upon returning home, Annie was so furious that she completely wrecked her room. Everything was turned upside down. The intensity of her anger was evident in the way she expressed it through her actions. Hearing the sounds of things breaking, Hans quickly rushed through towards Annie's room. Upon entering the room, he saw the state of the room which was a complete mess. He walked over to Annie and grabbed her by the arms. What's wrong with you? Get a hold of yourself. How can I regain my composure? I can't believe Jungkook defended that unworthy girl in front of everyone, scolding me and making me embarrassed. She raised her voice, her words echoed through the air, carrying a sense of madness and frustration. Hey, don't worry, we'll figure out something. Just take a deep breath and try not to let anger take control of you. He gently guided her towards the bed, helping her to sit down. But whatever Wan is truly beautiful, that innocent face of hers, the fact that Jungkook kept her hidden only adds to her allure. She has definitely caught my attention and I can't seem to get her out of my mind. He said with a mischievous grin on his face, a devilish smirk that revealed his playful intentions. His mind was consumed by thoughts of wine. Hence, don't you even think about pressing her beauty when I'm around. Annie's eyes narrowed as she tightly gripped Hans by his collar. Her voice filled with a mix of anger and warning. All right, all right, I won't utter a word. You're so evil. He said, removing Annie's hands from his collar. Well, don't you think, Annie, it could be seen as a positive thing for you if wine has captured my attention? Annie and Hans locked eyes, a mischievous glint in Hans' gaze as he smirked confidently. But what should we do? It's not that easy to touch something related to Jungkook. Annie's face lit up with joy for a brief moment. How, however, as the reality of the challenge sank in, her expression turned somber. No need to worry. There must be something we can do. I don't care whatever happens to her. I just don't want her to be involved in Jungkook's life. After seeing his reaction today, I'm afraid he might develop feelings for her. Annie's voice trembled with worry as she recalled the events of the party. Meanwhile, Hans seemed lost in his own thoughts. His mind fixated on Wayne's innocent face. The desire in his eyes was unmistakable. Next day, Jungkook sat in his chair in his underground office. His eyes closed as he leaned back. Suddenly, the door swung open and someone barged in and a deep frown of anger formed on his face. He knew exactly who it was. Annie quietly approached Jungkook from behind, her arms gently wrapping around him in a warm embrace. I understand you are mad at me for what happened yesterday, Jungkook, but I was just angry and let my anger get the best of me. I'm sorry. How many times do I have to tell you not to touch me? Can't you understand? Jungkook's frustration grew as he forcefully removed Annie's arms from around him. And if you truly want to apologize, then it's not me you should be apologizing to but rather Wayne. The mention of Wayne stirred up a fiery reaction within her, but she was able to regain her composure, refraining from saying anything negative about Wayne in front of Jungkook again. Come on Jungkook, don't be so harsh. You didn't marry her out of love, right? It was just because of your father. She said while attempting to sit on the handle of Jungkook's chair. Why can't you understand things easily, Annie? You are really pushing my patience. Remember, there's a reason I'm going easy on you, or else I would have already gotten rid of you. He said, forcefully pushing her away. And how many times do I need to tell you that I don't love you, nor do I want to be with you? Even if it's marriage out of love, I'm still married. Please stop acting so immature. I can't stand girls who throw themselves at men. Just look at why, and even though she's married to me, she has never acted like you. Why can't you understand my feelings for you? She exclaimed, her voice filled with anger as she clenched her fists tightly. 
I have already expressed my thoughts. Love cannot be imposed on someone. Please don't make me repeat myself. Now please leave. I have work to do and you've completely ruined my day. She stormed out of the office, slamming the door shut with a resounding bang. Just you wait. If I can't have you, then I won't let her be yours. As she thought to herself mischievously, a devilish smirk slowly formed on her face. The reason Jungkook tolerates Annie is that a year ago he had a near-death experience. Annie and Hans saved his life and Annie constantly reminded him of his debt to them. But now his patience with Annie was wearing thin. Jungkook stormed out of work furious at Annie's actions. As he made his way home, he was seething with anger. But just as he was about to pass through the garden of the mansion, he caught sight of wine and he froze in his tracks. Wine had a deep passion for gardening and her love for flowers was undeniable. Jungkook was aware of this but he hadn't paid much thought to it before. However, for some reason wine was catching his attention. In the midst of the flowers, she appeared as beautiful and enchanting as one of them. Jungkook slowly took steps towards her. As he approached her, Wan felt a presence behind her and couldn't help but turn around. Jungkook's eyes locked with Wan's and as a gentle breeze caressed her face, the strands of her hair danced in the air. Her innocence only added to her already enchanting beauty. Has she always been this beautiful? He thought to himself, Is there something you want to talk about? Her gentle voice tinged with confusion, pulling him back from his thoughts. Not really, I just happened to pass by and saw you here. He said, looking at the flowers in her hands. You really have a great love for flowers, don't you? As she heard his words, her eyes lit up with excitement. I absolutely adore these flowers. They bring me so much joy and happiness. With an innocent smile and a glimmer of excitement in her eyes, she spoke. I can already tell how much effort and care you put into tending these flowers. With a smile, he gestured towards the vibrant flowers in the garden. And you know what? What brings me immense joy is seeing someone else find happiness in these flowers. As he watched her engage in a joyful conversation with him, all his anger from moments ago faded away. Talking to her had a calming effect on his nerves. If it's okay with you, can I grab one of these? Of course, go ahead. Her face lit up with pure joy. With Wayne's permission granted, he gently plucked one of the beautiful rose flowers from her. It's beautiful, isn't it? Her happiness radiated like that of a child, bringing a smile to Jungkook's face as well. He gazed at the delicate flower before speaking. It is indeed beautiful, but it feels like there's something still lacking. Saying that, he took the flower and carefully tucked it behind her ear. Now it looks perfect and even more beautiful. She was taken aback by his unexpected gesture, leaving her completely shocked. As she regained her composure, a faint blush graced her cheeks. Nanko couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. Jungkook always held himself back from touching her, fearing that she might wilt away like a delicate flower, not realizing that she was a blossoming flower in his life, one that he had never truly noticed before. He walked into the mansion, leaving her standing there with flushed cheeks and a racing heart. At night, Wayne stood in the kitchen, skillfully decorating the cake she had baked just moments ago. I can't decide whether I should give it to him or not. For the past ten minutes, she found herself caught in a whirlwind of confusion, unsure whether to present it to Jungkook or not. But what if he misunderstands my intentions? She was completely engrossed in a conversation with herself. No, no, it's not like it's some sort of special occasion or some anything. I just want him to enjoy it. You know, sharing is caring. He's home earlier than usual today and he seems to be in a good mood too. Talking to herself, she finally came to a conclusion. She grabbed a slice of cake specifically for Jungkook and made her way out of the kitchen. As she arrived at his study, she hesitated outside, unsure whether to go in or not. Don't worry, Wan. It's not as if you are heading off to war or something. After she finished explaining herself, she took a deep breath and mustered up the courage to knock 
on the door. Hearing his permission from inside, she cautiously opened the door, stepping inside the room. As Wayan walked in, Jungkook's face lit up with a pleasant surprise as he saw her. Is everything all right? He said, standing up from his seat. I, I was that. She said while stuttering because of nervousness. Is that for me? He said, sneaking a glance at the plate of cake in her hand. Yes. Why don't you come over and have a seat, Wayan? He said, pointing towards the chair across from him. She walked towards the chair, little bit. to meet you. Why and because I wanted to apologize for the other day. I let my anger get the best of me and I took it out on you. Please forgive me. I am truly sorry. With tears streaming down her face, she uttered those words. Her voice trembling. It's okay. Please don't cry. It's really not that big of a problem. As she witnessed Annie's tears, she spoke soothingly, gently wiping them away and guiding her to the bed. Wayne, have you truly forgiven me? Yeah, I have forgiven you. Now don't cry. If you have thought about your mistake, that's enough. She softly uttered those words, her hands delicately resting against Annie's, unaware of her true intentions. If you've genuinely forgiven me, I would like to take you somewhere. She was on the verge of saying something, but before she could, Annie abruptly interrupted her. Please don't say no. If you do, I might think you haven't truly forgiven me yet. Wine hesitated, torn between her own feelings and not wanting to reject her either. But I still want to inform Jungkook first. Don't worry, I'll let him know. Just come with me. I really want to be friends with you. Falling for her fake tears and insincere apology, Wine was completely influenced by her. 
Let's go now. She grabbed Wan's arm firmly and swiftly guided her out of the room. Annie led Wan into a karaoke room, and as they entered, Wan's eyes fell upon a group of three girls and one man. A wave of uncertainty washed over her. She stopped and reached out to hold Annie's hand. Don't worry, they won't eat you. They are my friends, and starting today, they'll be your friends too. After the reunion with her friends, Annie took a seat, gesturing for Wan to sit. However, the only available spot for Wan was beside the man. Wan nervously took a few hesitant steps towards the sofa beside the man, carefully maintaining a distance between them. As Annie engaged in conversation with her friends, Wan couldn't help but feel like an outsider. The desire to escape from that unfamiliar place grew stronger within her. Wan, I brought you here to have a good time, not to sit there like that. You know, I've always felt sorry for you, not having many friends and being cooped up in your house all the time. She spoke, her voice dripping with false sincerity. I don't necessarily seek out friendships as I'm not particularly social. I prefer to have a small circle of close friends. In an effort to maintain politeness and avoid rudeness, she carefully chose her words, speaking with a gentle tone. I must say, your voice and way of speaking are quite beautiful, just like you. The man sitting beside Wyan and his friend Mike spoke. For some reason, the way Mike looked at her didn't sit well with her. She couldn't find it in herself to express gratitude and had a force and had to force a smile. Don't worry, Annie. I'll make sure Wan has a fantastic time today, and this day will be etched in her memory forever. As he spoke, he exchanged glances with Annie. A mischievous smirk played on his lips. All right, Mike. I'm putting this responsibility in your hands then. After a few minutes, Annie rose from her seat to leave the room. You guys have fun. I need to take this call. It's important. Seeing Annie rise from her seat, Wayne quickly stood up in response. I'm also going with you. You stay right here. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Annie pressed her hands on Wayne's shoulders, guiding her to sit down. With a sense of urgency, she quickly left the room. Jango crashed home unable to contain his excitement. It had only been a day, yet Wan had already become a part of his routine. He was missing her. As he made his way upstairs to his room, the maid approached him. Excuse me sir, but Miss Wan is sent home right now. The maid politely informed him. Wan isn't home, then where is she? He asked with a frown. Half an hour ago, Miss Annie came by and took Miss Wan with her. As soon as he heard Annie's name, a surge of anger rushed through him. His face grew red and his eyes narrowed with, with intensity. How dare she, taking her without even asking for my permission? His voice reverberated through the entire house, causing the maid to flinch. Annie, if you are trying to pull some tricks, I swear I'll make you regret it. He muttered angrily as he hastily rushed to the car. His men were already waiting for him. Wine anxiously waited for Annie's return, but there was no sign of her. A sense of unease began to creep over her. I'm going to find Annie. She's been gone for too long. She stood up abruptly from her seat. Hey, hold up. I haven't even had a chance to chat yet and you are already leaving. Don't worry, Annie will be back soon. He exclaimed, reaching out and pulling her back towards him. This time, he closed the gap between them. Please maintain some distance and talk, she said, pushing him away. Come on, let's have a drink with me. He completely disregarded her protests and boldly reached out, his hand landing on her shoulder. With a firm push, he drew her closer to him. I don't drink and please stay away from me. His boldness shed. His boldness sent shivers down her back, pushing him away, anger fueled within her, but deep down only she knew how truly frightened she was. Come on, babe, don't act like you were innocent with me. Taking the glass near her lips, he exclaimed. Fed up with his nonsense, wine had finally reached her limit. Without hesitation, she forcefully pushed the glass away, causing it to shatter into countless pieces. In a moment of instinct, 
Wang's hand swiftly moved towards his face, delivering a resounding slap as she swiftly stood up. Tears welled up in her eyes, ready to cascade down her cheeks. You've got some serious nerve, I must say. Do you even realize the situation you are in right now? Wang couldn't stand the sight of his smirking face. She felt an overwhelming urge to wipe that smirk right off his lips. Please let me go. With broken words, she turned around, desperately attempting to run away. As she was about to make her escape, Mike reached out, attempting to catch her. In his desperate attempt, he managed to grab hold of her sleeve, causing it to tear and revealing her delicate white arm. Just at that moment, the door swung open with a loud noise, revealing Jungkook. As his eyes met Wayans, a fiery rage burned within him. Jungkook, his name escaped her lips in a soft, almost breathless whisper. The sight of him standing before her brought an overwhelming sense of relief. How dare you touch my wife, you bastard! Putting his coat at her, Jungkook said, punching Mike in the face. While seeing the scene in front of her, Wan was standing there, her hands covering her mouth in shock and tears streaming down her face. Despite punching him several times and making his nose and mouth bleed, it seemed like it wasn't enough to calm Jungkook. Wan, why don't you go outside for a bit and cover your ears? Backing away from Mike, taking a deep breath, he called out to Wayne. Huh? Confused by his words, she asked, Do as I say now. He spoke with a firm tone, struggling to contain his anger. Turning around, she obeyed his command, sensing the seriousness in his voice. You made a huge mistake. You invited your dead. He said his voice dripping with ruthless determination as he mercilessly continued to beat him. Then he pulled out a gun with a silencer attached to it. Don't worry, I won't let you off the hook that easily. He said as he swiftly raised the gun and aimed it directly at his hands. The sound of the gunshots piercing through the air. Startled by the sudden gunshots, Wan flinched instinctively while covering her ears. Clean up this mess and make sure he doesn't die. He called his men, giving them orders and then made his way towards Wan. He placed his hand gently on her shoulder, causing her to jump in surprise. She quickly uncovered her ears and turned to face Jungkook. Without wasting a second, Ryan found herself in Jungkook's arms, seeking solace in his embrace. And without hesitation, Jungkook hugged her back just as tightly. Shh, it's okay now. Hearing her sniffing in his embrace, Jungkook whispered soothingly, stroking her hair. Annie, who was taken aback by Jungkook's sudden arrival, carefully assessed the situation. She wanted to address the situation without shouldering all the responsibility herself. Oh my god, Jungkook, what's happening here? What happened to Wayne? As Jungkook laid eyes on Annie, a surge of anger coursed through him. Without a word, he swiftly reached out and forcefully grabbed her by the neck. His eyes burned with intensity. How dare you to pull sneaky moves like this? If you want to meet your end, just say the word and I'll make sure you get there. He tightened his grip on her neck while Annie's face turned a deep shade of purple, her eyes bulging as if they were on the verge of popping out. He felt a grip on his arm, turning around he saw wine, her face soaked in tears and her face pale. No, please. Realizing how Wayne was feeling, he quickly released his grip on Annie's neck, pushing her away. Meanwhile, Annie was coughing intensely as a result of the forceful hold. You are lucky I'm letting you off the hook today because I don't want to because I don't want my wife to go through trauma. But don't you think I'll forget what happened today? Never pursue wine again. He warned Annie, then scooped wine up in his arms and swiftly made his exit. Time skip. Jungkook was sitting on the couch with wine on his lap, her arms wrapped around his neck and her head resting on his shoulder. Wan and Jungkook had returned home a few hours ago, but Wan was still feeling shaken by the incident earlier. She didn't leave Jungkook's embrace for even a moment. Seems like my embrace is so comforting that you just can't bear to leave, huh? He leaned in close, his voice teasing as he whispered in her ear. 
that that I was hearing his words she quickly realized their position and backed away ready to break free from his embrace stay still as she tried to break free he steadily caught her i won't allow you to escape from my grasp now he said firm he said firmly leaving her completely shocked do you know how worried i've been to, about you today just the very thought of you getting hurt was enough to drive me absolutely crazy he gently cupped her face in his hands his eyes filled with a deep and tender affection i'm sorry for causing you to worry she said sincerely avoiding his gaze and looking away sometimes i feel like you are too innocent how will you make it in this tough world but don't worry i promise i won't let anyone harm you hearing his words filled with so much determination made her smile innocently her lips curling up ah why and you really know how to drive me crazy he whispered pressing his face against the curve of her neck catching her completely off guard jungkook mm. he mumbled his face still buried in her neck his voice barely audible i'm sleepy sure let's get some rest then backing away he gently picked her up holding her close as they made their way to bed he gently laid her down keeping her head resting on his chest now get some sleep he leaned in softly and planted a tender kiss on her forehead meanwhile witnessing his unexpectedly affectionate sigh she was completely taken aback as he sensed her confusion a small form on his face why and wanna hear a little secret of mine his voice low and husky as he whispered into her ear she nodded her head completely captivated by him you captured my heart and soul and i can't escape your enchantment i can't help but be drawn to you after saying those words he flashed a gentle smile at her when's i widened in surprise is he confessing his feelings for me she spoke the words out loud her thoughts ex- escaping from her lips She suddenly became aware of her spoken words and quickly hid her face with her hands. Jungkook's laughter filled the room, echoing in her ears. Yes, I did confess my feelings. Hearing his words, she buried herself deeper in his chest. Look at me. He gently spoke as he gently removed her hands from her face. What about you? How do you feel about me? Looking into her eyes with a deep gaze, he asked. Hearing his words, she hesitated at first, but then mustered up the courage to open her mouth. To be honest, I've actually liked you since the start of our marriage, but I didn't want to burden you with my feelings. I was already grateful to you for giving me everything. With a gentle smile on her lips, she revealed her true feelings to him. As they stood there, it felt like time stood still. With only the two of them in that moment, their eyes locked, overflowing with love and affection. I apologize for not considering your feelings. I'm truly sorry. With a gentle touch, Wen delicately placed her hand on his cheek. No need to apologize. It's all in the past now. I'm actually feeling really happy at this moment. Jungkook gently lifted her hand from his face, bringing it close to his lips. With a tender touch, he pressed a soft kiss on her knuckles. I swear I'll do whatever it takes to make you the happiest person in the world. Leaning in close, he gently rested his forehead against hers. With a determined tone, he spoke, causing her to giggle in joy. They lay down together, completely wrapped up in each other's presence, talking and sharing their thoughts. Time slipped away unnoticed as they drifted off to sleep. A month flew by and during that time, Wan discovered just how clingy Jungkook could be. Whenever he was home, he wouldn't let her do anything, finding all sorts of excuses to stay by her side and spend more time together. He would surprise her with new gifts each day. Jungkook walked into his office with his man following closely behind. He took a seat in his chair and gave him some orders. Have you completed the task I assigned to you? He said with a blank expression on his face. The tenderness that was reserved only for Wayne and was nowhere to be found. Yes sir, I have discovered the evidence and as you suspected, Hans was involved in the plot to kill you back then. As Jungkook heard those words, a smirk slowly spread across his face. He finally had a valid reason. 
person to remove him from the equation. And what about Annie? Have you found out what she's up to these days? Here's the complete recording of their plot. After the man's statement, he pressed the play button on the recording. As the voices of Hans and Annie reached their climax, Jungkook's anger began to boil inside him, threatening to burst. He listened intently, hanging on to every word. As the conversation unfolded, it became clear that their plan was to kidnap Wyan when the opportunity arose. Jungkook's heart sank as he listened to Hans discussing taking Wyan out of the country and never to be seen again. Jungkook was so furious that he couldn't contain his anger any longer. He slammed his hand down on the table, the sound reverberating through the room. Put them both in the most dreadful cell. As the man left following Jungkook's orders, he left Jungkook alone with his thoughts. After the incident involving Wan, Jungkook took extra measures to tighten the security around her, ensuring that Annie wouldn't be able to reach her again. And now, fi- and now Jungkook finally had a legitimate reason to deal with the obstacle known as Annie. Jungkook walked into the cell room and took a seat on the chair that had been prepared for him. He looked around and saw Hans lying unconscious on the floor, covered in blood. Covered in blood. Annie's condition was no different from his, as she too lay there in a similar state. Annie's eyes fluttered open and she slowly lifted her head, her gaze fixated on Jungkook. Why did you do this to us? She shouted, her voice filled with anger and frustration. Do you honestly believe that I am unaware of the fact that the two of you were scheming? He said with a stern expression, hearing his words and his eyes widened in surprise. And your brother was part of that incident in the past and now we are even. No, 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 please, you can't do this. Hearing his words, Annie couldn't contain her fear any longer. She shouted, fully aware of the impending danger that, that awaited them. But what you did was even worse. You both tried to take away someone so important to me, and you knew very well that I don't forgive people who lie and betray. Ignoring her cries, he stood up from his spot, paying no attention to her pleas. If anyone tries to hurt wine, I'll burn them to ashes. His words were filled with intense passion. Don't let them die. Ignoring Annie's cries, he gave orders to his men and swiftly exited the room. Late at night, he returned home and quietly entered their bedroom, knowing Wyan would already be asleep. With gentle footsteps, he approached the bed and sat beside her as she was sleeping peacefully. He stared at her sleeping face for a while, then reached out to touch her hair. His fingers brushed it lightly, causing her eyelashes to flutter and her eyelids slowly open. Their eyes met. I'm sorry for waking you up. He gently intertwined his fingers with hers, causing her lips to curve into an innocent smile. Her smile warmed his heart, putting him in a good mood.